Mary Beth is going to do a walkthrough of the garden. Hello, my name is Mary Beth. Uh, welcome to my garden. I'm going to give you a shot of where I am on the porch. And this is clay soil. It's fill. This was originally a uh, oyster beds back at the turn of the century. I am going to walk around and show you a few of the things that I have here that were not mentioned. This is a lovely Phacelia bolanderi that likes the shade, sun in coastal areas. It has a pretty bell-like flower. Here is some elegant Clarkia. And uh, I have the elegant Clarkia in a um, pot with Epilobium canum uh, hummingbird fuchsia so that it doesn't get carried away, which it often does. As was mentioned before, a lot of these plants will grow underground. This is a defense mechanism for places that are dry, like California. Can you um, get close up on the Clarkia flower? Oh, sure. It comes in a, a oh, bunch yeah. of different beautiful colors. And this is from reseeding from past uh, plantings. Here is a uh, relatively rare flower. It's the uh, uh, San Francisco wallflower. And I've got a lot of seed here, so I'm looking forward to having it in my garden next year. I'll give you a quick look at the front yard, which is mostly the things that that were talked about before that are green all year and don't have to be tended so much as things that disappear, for instance. Here is a, a little close-up of a, some annuals. This is Phacelia tanacetifolia. This is a, I don't want to get in the sun, this is a Colomia grandiflora, which was found in San Francisco many years ago. I think it's been extirpated there. Here it is as the flowers get a little bit older. These are all much uh, loved by bees, and these are, were actually planted by birds. Here is a small hillside pea, if you can see. It has the little purple flower. This was also planted by the birds. They used to only be over on the far side of my yard, roaming into my uh, male baccarus. So hillside pea is a native vine, right? Yes, very small. Okay, so we're gonna walk back into my backyard. I have a little side yard here. Let me show you that. This mm -hmm. is all of my wildflowers. You can see there are quite a few bees. There's a couple of different kinds of bumblebees. There's a queen, if you can see her, um, on the phacelia. And um, so uh, walking back, I just want to say that I started gardening for um, bees about 10 years ago. And then I decided that what I really wanted to do was create an ecology. So I looked very hard for things that would have lived here uh, before the whites came. And so here we are now in my backyard, my patio. So this is the um, coffee berry. Oh, and I wanted to show you on the coffee berry, it has a, a little creature that creates this cute little purse and it is specific to this plant. It's the midrib gall moth. So um, that's a California native moth. In the backyard patio, I also have the wax myrtle, which was spoken of before, the ribes, bunch of another plant that completely disappears and then comes back again is the um, bleeding heart. Can you so, show us the flowers of the bleeding hearts? Oh, sure. Yeah, um, the sun is nice enough to have colored them for us, so you can see them. Okay, so I, I have, uh, as I may have said, I have a rose before I became totally native plant oriented, but roses are also native, not this rose, so this stands in for the native rose. Here is my damp garden. This is a uh, self-filling bird bath and there there are just 
too many things in this little meadow for me to mention. There's a Horkelia, which has tiny white flowers later in the season. There are Pacific Sanical, several grasses. This is the meadow barley. I have a little Stachys bulata down here, which is um, also a wetland plant. Artemisia douglasii, which is a, a beautiful plant with a wonderful scent. And over here, the uh, creek clematis, which is just about to bloom, it's growing up into the neighbor's um, potato vine. It has wonderful white flowers and then a little puff that lasts for the rest of the season to make even leafless plants look nice. Going through into my dry meadow, one of my favorite plants is the mule's ears, which was obviously uh, named by someone who knew about mules and thought their leaves looked like mule's ears. Can you um, go closer, please? Sure. And you have what next to them are blue dicks? Those are blue dicks, yes. And Those are both. this is this is a yes. Another thing, both of these are plants that completely disappear. So you either want to mark where they are or put them underneath the ground cover so that they will come up through it and you won't accidentally dig them up. Over here I have my soap root, which is just about to bloom. It only blooms one evening in the year and attracts all these pollinators for just that little short time. Another plant that completely disappears is the um, narrow-leaved milkweed. All of this is growing up through the coyote mint, which has little pink flowers when it blooms. Over here, I have another version of the barberry. This is Nevin's barberry. It has grayer leaves. It does have the little yellow flowers. The berries, when they're ripe, look like salmon eggs. Here is a um, Indian plum. This is deciduous, but I just love the color of the leaves. Creeping out from behind it is the native honey sap. I've also got the monkey flower, which you can see, and behind it, silver bush lupin. In the back here, I have a grape. This isn't the native grape, although it has native grape genes in it. This is Emeryville pink. Behind or in front of that is a uh, cream bush. This is the cow parsnip, which I had one tiny plant and it went to seed, and, and this is what I ended up with. Um, that, California. It has uh, an odd odor, and flies pollinate that one a lot. Yes, it, I, you can see, I don't, maybe you can't see, there are tons of little insects flying all around here, and it gets very quickly pollinated so the, the flowers disappear within a couple of days. Sneezeweed, California goldenrod, and in the distance you can see a um, yerba santa, which is not really considered a garden worthy plant because it tends to attract a lot of um, black fungus, but I don't know if you can see it's blooming right over there. This is one of the plants that has uh, about a hundred insects that are attracted to it. So that is my garden. Can you show us your arbutus? Oh, yes. Oh, I'd forgotten about that. Okay, so I, I have a, a, um, a little, um, uh, well, it, it was little long ago. I had a little four inch. Um, so you see Arbutus on our streets. Um, it, they use a hybrid form of Arbutus. And this is the native form that we were trying to get her to show, but. There you go. Yes. So this, is, this started out as a little four inch plant. 
Um, now, as you can see, it has berries that are much loved by the birds. Um, below it, I have a another, yet another kind of phacelia. This is a woodland phacelia, and underneath all of the stinging phacelia is the yerba buena that was talked about before. This is my garlic garden. Um, how often do you maintain the, the, you know, like what kind of maintenance does it take, like weeding and watering? Well, um, in the, it's, it's hard with, um, with the, um, I like to leave things so that I can um, provide like nesting materials. Some of the plants, uh, their seeds are nesting materials for hummingbirds, for instance. So uh, I like to leave them sometimes. So I can't say that it always looks really wonderful. Sometimes in the fall, when the seed pods are left on the, on the drying plants, it's not that attractive. But the med meadow area, I think, looks pretty good all year round. I do spend a little a little time in the garden every day, so that that helps me to weed and um, and cut back some of the other unsightly dead stalks. So now it looks like we're close to our. Does anybody have any questions for any any of the presenters? I I would like to know if possible. Robert uh, showed garia tree with the yes. muscles. Do you need a female and a male to have that or? I'm pretty sure the male will make that on its own. I don't oh. think you need them next to each other for the necklace to come out. All right. Okay. Um, there are the, the Pacific wax myrtle I showed, to have berries, you have to have a male and female for that one. But thank you, Mary Beth, for, for the garden tour. Thank you so much for inviting me. Oh, you're welcome. Your garden is really nice. It's a, it's a great example for others to follow.